Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this mighty looking beast, which is of course the SDKFZ-7 Half-Track Artillery Tractor, which is a name that just rolls right off the tongue. This is a 156th or 28mm scale plastic kit from Rubicon Models. As is often the case with Rubicon kits, this has options and can make the base SDKFZ-7, but it can also be built to carry the 2cm FLAC Verling 38 or the 3.7cm FLAC 43, both of which are available separately. If I understand correctly, those are the SDKFZ-71 and 72 respectively. The back of the box looks pretty much like any Rubicon box. There's an illustration of the vehicle, some colour suggestions, an image of the included decals, and a few paragraphs of information about the vehicle and its use during the war. Very good. Here's what's inside the box. Sprues, decals, and instructions. No surprises here. There are three sprues full of all sorts of bits and pieces that should, unless you do it very wrong, end up looking like a half-track. As I would expect from Rubicon, these parts are very nicely moulded. Everything is quite neat and tidy, I wasn't able to find any defects, and while mould lines are present, they won't require an excess of cleanup. I don't think you can quite see it in these shots, but there are some sinkholes in the tracks. They are between the treads though. And to be fair, this isn't going to be super visible, and should be easy enough to hide. And also, probably hard to avoid during manufacture but I thought I'd point it out anyway. Other than that, I really only have positive things to say about this kit. The detailing is quite nice, and there's a bunch of interesting plate, grate, and bolt detail which I like. Though of course you do have to keep in mind that this is intended as a model for wargaming. There is going to be some simplification and omission of detail, though it still totally looks the part. As the box promised, decals are included. There are plenty of number plates and markings here, certainly more than you'll need for one vehicle. Rubicon decal sheets are always good for a variety of markings. I have a whole stack of them in my decal collection. And of course, instructions. These are what you might expect from Rubicon. They're clear and well laid out. Certain things are pointed out in red, like parts that need to be attached first, which is quite helpful. I know that I've certainly inadvertently put things together in the wrong order myself once or twice. Let's begin. The first step is to join the internal floor part to the base of the vehicle. Actually, because this part would be different if you want to build the gun versions, the initial step should really be deciding on which version of the half-track you want to build. I'm building the standard version with the seating, so I use the part with the seats. Crazy, I know, but come with me on this adventure. The part goes into place rather easily. A little pressure and some extra glue does help though. Next, I attach the Notec Convoy light. I'm not sure why this is done now rather than later, but let's just go with it. It's not hard to get into place with the handy dandy recess for it to slot into. Then come the ball on stick vehicle corner indicators. That's the technical term now, ball on stick. These are kind of thin, so if you're concerned about breaking these, I would suggest leaving them off until the end of the build. You're allowed to deviate from the instructions if you want to. I think they should be okay, just don't be too rough I guess. As you can see, I already have one of the sides on. I just forgot to hit record. For now, I am attaching the radiator grill. There's a pretty big slot for this to mount into, and it's actually highlighted blue on the instructions. I added this after the side part so I could be sure it was going to line up nicely. I follow this with the right side of the body, which I put into place before adding glue. These parts are not difficult to get into place and do fit together fairly well, though I did leave the rear of these long side parts without glue to reduce the chance of fit issues with the rear part, which comes next. There weren't really any issues, but I did need to do a little bit of nudging and some pressure applying to make sure the gaps weren't too bad. It's ended up looking pretty good if you ask me. Moving to the front, I install the hood. This isn't really hard to install, though it did need a bit of pressure to get it into position, and to eliminate the gaps of course. There should be a gap between the hood and the sides of the engine compartment, but they shouldn't be too big. The dashboard comes next, and while I was able to nudge it into place with my knife, 
I think it might have been slightly easier to do this before installing the hood. The steering column can then be installed. I did cut out most of the fiddling I had to do with this, because if I didn't, the video would be 600 years long. Maybe a slight exaggeration, but it was still a fair bit of fiddling. I did of course get the part into place eventually, and it wasn't really that hard. The keying at the top of the dashboard was really quite helpful. Gear sticks come next. These might also have been easier to attach earlier in the build, but clearly not impossible to do here. I certainly appreciate that these are a single piece, rather than three tiny bits to install separately. That would have been annoying. At any rate, they look pretty decent. I imagine that the crew would probably appreciate a seat, so I install this lower part of the forward seat. You can see that it's not symmetrical, so make sure that you put it around the right way. A way to steer the vehicle is probably also a good idea, so here's the steering wheel. It's really simple to install. You didn't think I'd stop making those jokes, did you? The windshield part is also easy to install, though it's not really easy because it's not a wheel. This can simply slot into place between the, I guess you would call them hinge points. As you can see, I haven't glued this in place yet because I haven't decided if I want it up or down. There's no glazing for the windows, but in this scale, I'm fine with that. Next come the headlamps. There's a choice of two different types of lamps here, and I've chosen the covered blackout lamps because I think they look more interesting and wartime-like. These were kind of fiddly to install, and probably would have been a bit easier to do at the same time as the no-tech lamp. I got them in place eventually though, and they look pretty decent. Next, more seats. I suppose these could have been installed at the same time as the forward seats, but they weren't. So, I don't know, I guess deal with it? These are pretty simple to install, as I'm sure you can see. In front of the middle seats, I install these shovels. There's no keying for these, and you could of course leave them off if you would prefer, but they're easy enough to eyeball and nudge into place. On the rear of that seat, an axe is installed. This should come in handy when somebody in the back needs to axe a question. Like the shovels, there's no keying, but it's not hard to get into place. After that, I assemble the backrest for the front seat. This is pretty simple to put together, and the rear part has nice racks <laughs> for rifles. There's no keying on the tools here either, but getting them into place is really simple. The way I do this is to put the tool in place using gravity to hold it, then I let the extra thin glue seep around the parts to bond them into place. Easy. I set that aside and glue this little rectangly thing into the backrest for the middle set of seats, which also includes a nice rack. And then, why not install those assemblies? The forward one slots into place, and there are guides for it, though there is still a little bit of play. I add glue and apply pressure to the sides to get as good a bond as I can. You can see the lower parts to mount rifles into, but I'm either going to omit the rifles or paint them separately and add them later. Painting them in place seems like it would be kind of a pain in the dick. There are some L-shaped keyings for this backrest part, and it's obviously pretty easy to get into place. Again, a little pressure from the sides and it's on. The doors on the rear stowage compartments come next. On stream, I mused that it might be interesting to put stuff in here and have the doors open. I obviously haven't done that, but it would be cool to see. And the door parts are quite easy to install. The backrest for the rearmost seat goes into place next. There is a bit of play in this part, but I think I've got it positioned correctly, leaning slightly back. Then the upper part, or roof part, of the rear section is installed. This isn't too hard to put on, but there is a bit of a gap around the part, and I'm not really sure that should be there. It shouldn't be at all difficult to fill in if you feel a need to do so. Next, I make the stowage basket, or I guess you would call it a basket? This is for the rear of the hull, and it goes together nice and easy, though you should certainly pay attention to be sure the parts are aligned properly. Nothing too tricky to that, really. Another stowage holding device, though this one is a bit less baskety in my opinion. I like the way they've done this. It's just two bars with little leg bits that mount together vertically, which is quite simple, and so the parts can be a bit thinner, and it's really easy to put together. Whoever designed this deserves some praise. 
Before installing those I add some handrails for the passengers. These will be important when the driver decides to go for those sick jumps. There are rectangular mounting slots on either end for this bar to go into. I found it did need a bit of nudging until it looked right, but I think it's ended up looking pretty good. Same goes for these smaller ones in the rear. It's probably not going to be impossible, but I do think these bars are going to make it a bit more difficult to install the rifles, so I probably won't. I suspect they may normally only be there when there are infantry anyway, and since I'm not going to be installing infantry figures, and none are included in the kit, I think leaving the racks empty makes sense. I then install the stowage retaining rails, or whatever you want to call them, which is very easy. You just drop the part into its mounting holes and add glue. I follow that with the rear basket, which is just as easy to put on. There are some jerry cans that are intended to go in the rear stowage, but I've not installed those. I think they would be easier to paint separately anyway. When I do paint this, I'm considering using one of the Rubicon stowage kits. I don't plan on doing that soon, so it can wait. And with that, the half track is pretty much done now, though a couple of crucial components are missing. So now it's time to build some tracks. These are fairly simple to assemble, and I do like that the treads and some of the road wheels come as one part. I start by gluing the inner half of the drive sprocket into place, then the three internal wheels, which also come as one part. The bars along the back, which also form guide pins, shouldn't be visible once the tracks are on the model. The three outer wheels are separate parts, though they're still very simple to get into place. I add a bit of extra glue where the wheels contact the tracks because why not? And that's the tracks done. This is a half track and not a full track though, so there's still more ground contacty bits to make. Mostly these steering wheels. Okay, only these steering wheels. This is a simple matter of gluing the wheels, which have a D-shaped keying, onto the single axle part. There is a little bit of play in these joins, so you might find that you've got to nudge them a bit so they're aligned nice and straight. I put those aside, then I add glue to the various contact points for the tracks on the bottom of the hull. Installing the tracks is very easy. In some of these shots you may be able to see the sinkholes between the treads that I mentioned earlier. This might be a big deal for some, but not for me. Probably not for most. Because I'm really good at what I do, I forgot to hit record in time, but as you can see here, I've also installed the steering wheels. You can see that they have a very subtle flattened spot at the bottom of the wheel. This is intended to simulate the weight of the vehicle, and is the reason the wheels have that D-shaped keying. The final step is the roof. This half track is a cool convertible, so you can have the roof either folded down or folded up. I've chosen folded down for reasons. For this you need to install the support bars, or whatever you would call them, into the canvas part. That assembly then goes in place on the hull here. The end of the support bars have a nub that fits into the raised brackety bit alongside the rearmost seats. The part for the extended canvas covering looks pretty good too, and I did um and ah quite a bit when deciding how I wanted to do this. In fact I am tempted to build another one with the roof up. But since I only had one of these kits, and wasn't especially interested in magnetising the roof, this open topped version is what I chose to make. And with that, the SDKFZ7 half track in 28mm scale by Rubicon Models is now completed. My patrons decided that I would build this model first, before the Rubicon SDKFZ222, and I'm pretty glad they chose this. I really enjoyed the build, and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. I don't know that it's actually going to see much use in my bolt action force, though I'm sure it could tow the flat gun that I built a while ago. I assume anyway. All of that's okay though, I don't buy models for their effectiveness in a game, I usually buy them because of how cool I think they look. And I'm sure a lot of you will agree that this thing looks pretty cool. I'd drive one. Not only does the model look good, it was quite easy to put together as well, and as long as you're paying attention to the instructions and not attaching parts for the wrong variant, there should be no issues. I did see somebody ask about magnetising this kit so that you could have the passenger compartment and switch that out for the gun mounting, but I think that would require quite a lot of work, including cutting a few of the parts. I imagine it could be done, but I would personally put it in the two hard basket and just buy another one for the gun version. 
That said, like many others, I am poor, so I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon, but eventually I might. Like most of the models you see in my videos nowadays, I built this kit on stream. If you would like to witness me gluing bits of plastic together and hang out with a bunch of good folks in the chat, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp or follow the convenient link in the description. Give me a follow and when I go live, drop by and say hi. That would be great. What do you think of this kit? Have you built it before? Do you find this kind of half-track useful in your German forces? Let me know in the comments below and if you have built it, Maybe you would like to share some of your pictures with us over on my Discord server. There's a link for that, and a bunch of other stuff too, in the description. If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, and all the other things you do on the internet. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video around. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.